this is Dr. Jim Hafner, and in today's video we are assessing the VBI test, which is going to be vertebral basilar insufficiency. It's important to note when performing this test that both the sensitivity and specificity of the test are not good, so there are multiple ways to perform it, multiple, multiple positions, but what's important to note is that you need to cluster the results of this test with other patient findings. To perform the test, first you're going to have the patient go into maximum cervical rotation. And as he's here, we're actually assessing the opposite vertebral artery. So as Brian rotates his head to the left, we're looking at the right vertebral artery. From this position, the examiner is going to be watching the patient's eyes as he counts back from 10. So go back from 10, Brian. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. While in this position, we will discuss what those positive findings are in just a moment. Second part of the test then is going to be sliding up on the table, going into extension of the head and neck, and again, watching the patient's eyes while he counts back from 10. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Excellent, slide up just a little bit. And then finally, the third part of the test is gonna be a combined extension and rotation. It should be noted with this that with each one of these, since we're going into extension and rotation on the left, that we're assessing the right BBI for all of them, or the right vertebral artery. So extension and rotation, count back from 10. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Excellent. Right a positive test is going to be a reproduction of the five Ds and three Ns. And those five Ds are dysarthria, diplopia, dysphagia, dizziness, and drop attacks. And the three Ns that we're looking for are nausea, nystagmus, and facial numbness and tingling. 